Hi, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Mondays with Mindy. Today, Mindy and I will be having a conversation with actor, writer, and producer Jeffrey Self. Jeffrey grew up in the South, a native of Georgia, to be exact. After attending middle school, he persuaded his parents to let him be homeschooled to avoid dealing in high school and the fact that he was gay and obviously getting very bullied. Jeffrey is the author of two humor books, Fifty Shades of Gay and Straight People, A Spotter's Guide, as well as the young adult novels, A Very, Very Bad Thing and Drag Team. He's appeared in numerous television shows. He and Cola Scola starred in the sketch comedy series, Jeffrey and Cole Casserole, which aired on local t- Logo TV for two seasons and appeared in episodes of Desperate Housewives, Hot in Cleveland, 30 Rock, uh, 90210, Shameless. Um, he co-wrote, pretty starred in the indie horror cult movie, You're Killing Me, which is where I first met him because he graciously cast me in it. That's right. He was the host of the MTV series Scream After Dark and has most recently wrapped the fourth season playing Mark Duber on TBS and HBO Max phenomenon Search Party, which we have just found out is picked up for season five. Yeah. Could not be Uh happier. (laughs) Jeffrey is coming to us uh, from Los Angeles. Uh, He lives there with his husband, Augustus Prue. Awesome. Ladies and gentlemen, we're very excited to welcome to the show Jeffrey Self. Hey. Hi. Hello, handsome. Hello. How's it going? How are you? Good. I'm opening my secret canister. You're just going. You're just going with it. You're just getting. I mean, some honestly, it's you, it's you. I could. We can just do a deep dive in. There's no. There's no pretense. There's no formality. It's Jeffrey Self. Oh. All right. Uh, Jeffrey. Yeah. What do you splurge on? Ooh, ooh. We were actually, my husband and I were just talking about that yesterday because we were like, well, we were because I'm going, I'm about to live in New York. We're, we're going to live in New York for the summer. And we were looking at how expensive apartments are. And I was like, oh my God, how does anyone in New York afford any sort of life? And then I was thinking about what do we splurge on? Because we were comparing ourselves to, to friends who do live in New York. And um, I think I just, like nice meals, like fancy restaurants. Mm. I really like a fancy restaurant. And even during COVID, like having fancy restaurants delivered was a whole new level of indulgence that I really enjoyed splurging on. Like uh, I live on the east side in Ippo. I don't know if you've been there in Highland Park. Started doing at the beginning of quarantine a delivery meal that was like they'd make you a martini mm. deliver. I mean, it was she, she, <laughs> she. And they like packaged it really like chicly and it just felt like you were at a fancy meal. Um, wow. So splurging on fancy meals probably my number one and then also i manically buy glasses all the time because i have to wear glasses uh to see Same. far away and i just like buy them constantly um and because there's so many like not even expensive ones but like the cheapo like um i buy direct and like zelly mm-hmm. or zelly or is that a man that's a sending them that's like a bin mode thing all, but all of something them i'm like so that. obsessed i mean yeah. obviously caddis appliances so I- good <laughs> These are my newest ones. I'm so uh, so far up there, Tushy, because uh, I'm obsessed with all of their, they call them eye appliances. I know. I know. It makes me feel very, I don't know. It's a thing. It's become I love a thing. Them. Yeah. And it's like, yeah. And especially because, you know, you have, to, you have to wear them all the time. It's worth searching on. Right. Yeah, agreed. And I do have to say for women, well, maybe for some men too, as you age, it's so nice to put these on and not have to wear as much eye makeup. I fully get that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I will just have to say. I haven't uh, worn eye makeup since middle school though. So, uh, <laughs> But you're bringing it back, right? Tell me you're going to bring uh, it back at some point. My eyes are too sensitive. My eyes are too sensitive. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Easy. What is your best habit and what is your worst habit? my best habit. My best habit is I'm a um, diligent reader. I read pretty much from the minute I wake up every morning, I try to read for at least like 30 minutes while I drink coffee um, and, and try like to read a book, not like just Instagram or Twitter or some shit. And I would say, and I also read throughout the day. And then I would say my worst habit, I get jealous really easy. Of okay. Uh, we might be separated at birth a little bit. Um, that was not, but that's not an insult in any way, shape or form. I don't think so. Oh, uh, let me ask you this. Can I just go back to this reading thing? 
Yeah. I am a voracious reader. However, comma, during COVID and during the yeah. pandemic, I could not sit and concentrate for more oh, than 20 minutes to save my life about reading. And oh, I, wow. I'm really missing it. You are able to, no matter where you are, do a deep dive into something. Yeah, for the most part. I think if I'm like going through some sort of like depression moment, I don't really read because I can't really focus. But um, I think for the most part, yeah, I can. I, and during the pandemic, I read a lot, like a lot, a lot, probably more than even normal. Like when I was in, because uh, Augie, my husband was shooting in New Zealand and I had to go there and do that like two week quarantine thing. Mm-hmm. I didn't do, I never turned the TV on. I just read literally wow. for two weeks. It was true heaven. Like I ran That's out, awesome. I brought tons of books. I ran out, I had my iPad. I was able to like check out books out of the LA library from the app and stuff um, from New Zealand, which is great how that works. Oh my gosh. Um, but, you are uh, a marvel, sir. A marvel. Marvel. <laughs> I read so much in that quarantine and, and basically the whole quarantine. Yeah. Um, but, so you uh, have tremendous focus. With that, not with really anything else, though. Like, uh, oh, look, a bird. <laughs> I know, yeah, 100%. I, I have a hard time. I mean, like, I love watching movies, but I end up pausing one. Like, if it's a two hour movie, it takes me like four hours to watch it. And if it's a three hour movie, like two weeks. But um, <laughs> I'll treat like a three hour movie, like, you know, like a series that I'm binging. Um, but uh, so that I don't have as good a focus on. And like in a conversation, I have a hard time focusing and all that. But like with reading, yeah, I can pretty much always focus. I am so impressed. I'm also a very jealous person. Oh my and God. I hate to admit it, but I really am. It's so jealous of everybody. I thought it would. I thought I would age out of it. Yeah. Now I'm here to tell you. I'm here to tell you, sir. It stays with you. It's tough. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. In this um, town. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Sometimes I'm not as happy for my friends as my heart wants to be. Oh, I know. I, yeah, I get a little green. Yeah, yeah, I'll admit it. Um, if you could have dinner with any three people, who would they be? Um, if I could have dinner with any three people, who would they be? Um, I'm a bad, I well, I don't think all of these people get along, so it would be <laughs> even better. It would be, it would be difficult. But I love very much two of my faves are Rosie O'Donnell and Whoopi Goldberg. But Ooh. I don't, I don't, from the sound of it, don't really get along anymore. So that would be a difficult dinner. And I'd also love to throw Oprah in there, but I don't know where Oprah stands with Rosie anymore. I think she and Whoopi are okay after some sort of Tyler Perry lunch that they sort of talked about on the final season of Oprah. Um, but I, uh, I would, those would be my three, but, um, I would, I feel like I would have to spend the whole time playing referee. And really what I want is just like some mimosas and a joint with whoops and just like a really chill, lovely conversation. But I, I think it would get, there, there'd be some egos involved, unfortunately, I think. Oh, even I, for me as well, maybe. I, but, I, um, no, I doubt that, but I, I know it would be. It would, it would very be. Tough. It would be tricky, but I would. I would really. Uh, I, I would enjoy that. That would be a nice dinner. Yes. Well, I, I'm um, available to serve because I, I was just like a cheater. That. Day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I mean, pressed be. against the door, being like, <laughs> "Are they fighting? They're fighting." It yeah. Would be a good I would just. I would just like to truly just listen. Um, <laughs> who is your celebrity crush? Well, I mean, besides Whoopi Goldberg, um, my celebrity crush always is changing. Like, let's say some days we're at a Harry Styles place, but then some days yeah. we're in like a ghost of James Dean place. Yeah. Day, um, I love a ghost. I love a lot. Of, I have a lot of crushes on ghosts. Um, <laughs> I've never um, called them ghosts, but I will now. Yeah, you know, ghost crush. And uh, coming to the CW. And... Uh, <laughs> Totally. By the way, I think I've come up with another Mondays with Mindy question. Who is your ghost crush? <laughs> ghost crush. Yeah. I mean, I have a lot of ghosts, but I would say um, probably the person. Uh, yeah. Harry Styles is at the moment the one that I um, I pine after the most. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah. I mean, oh, not, yeah. not that it matters what I think, but um, I think he's just better than anticipated. I agree. Uh, I like a surprise. 
eyes. Like, I have okay. to say, oh. my friend, my friend Marjorie and I talk about New York dinners. We were at Carbone and he was sitting next to us having what I know was a business meeting because it, it was yeah. just it, he was adulting. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and I said to Marjorie, I said, I don't know about you, but I really think this qualifies as us having dinner with Harry Styles. And I, she goes, I support you in that. <laughs> yeah, you've done it. You did so, it. Yeah, I've had dinner with Harry Styles. I don't think he knows it, but we did. <laughs> uh, what assumption do people make about you that's wrong? Um, I don't know. I mean, most assumptions about me are probably right, unfortunately. <laughs> um, but really? that, uh, what are those? What do you mean? <laughs> Uh, I don't know, but if they make it, it's probably, there's probably, if there's smoke, there's fire. There's good reason. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, I would say, um, um, assumption that people make about me that is wrong. I mean, I feel like maybe people, sometimes people, like friends are like, oh, you're so, you like, you're always, you're always working. You're always like working on things, little projects on your own and, even when you don't have a job, and I and I actually am not. Um, I'm just good at pretending to seem busy because I'm usually no, but not you, that busy. You, you do present like you've got a lot cooking. I will I say do, that I, I do present that way, but the reality is most of the time <laughs> is there is very little cook. In fact, most of the time I'm just cooking. I'm literally just <laughs> cooking dinner for myself. <laughs> <laughs> not, yeah. and not even and not even doing a good job. Oh please! Um, I'm not a very why, good <laughs> why the why the um, summer excursion to New York? We're shooting the final season. I think it's the final season, fifth season at least of Super right. Party. Um, I'm so excited. And I'm excited yeah. too. I'm more excited yeah. that I'm actually going to be there, and I'm going to figure yeah. out a post COVID way to come visit you. Yes, please do. Um, I have to. It's uh, yeah, it's, it's a really fun season and it starts shooting uh, a week from Monday. Um, and oh, wow. uh, it's I've only read the first three scripts, but it's really, really, really good. And there, well, of course, it is. Some inc- there's one specific incredible guest star this season that I am I am deeply excited to, to have a scene with. Okay, I'm very excited. Yeah. Um, I have to say, as you know, it's become it, I'm, I'm obsessed with it. Um, I think the the genius of it, there's many genii about it, but one, one of the, yes, one of the, one of the things is that uh, it's so different season to season is fifth season going to disappoint. Is it has, oh, has, it's a whole has it just tapped? Yeah. Yeah. Cause like, oh you know, like, they've had like the, the missing person thing last season was basically right. misery. Um, uh, this season, I don't, I don't think they want people to say what, what kind of genre it is, but it's right. another genre in the, it makes sense with the other genres. Okay. I, I, that's enough for me. That's fine. I it think you were, so as, brilliant. Uh, yeah, I think you, it was obtuse yet intriguing. Yeah. That, that's it's definitely wanting more. Yeah, I want more. I do. I always want more search party. Okay. That makes me very happy. It also makes me happy that I'm going to see you in New York. Yeah, um, I'm so excited. And then when I finish, Augie is going to be there uh, shooting a movie right after me. So I think we're just going to stay until potentially like September. Do it. Nice. Do it. And then, hi, you just have to stay because Broadway's opening. I know. Cause if and we my, stay tush, enough, my tush is going to be in seats that first week, September 15th. That's going to be so exciting. I know I really want to go to one of those shows, their first performance back. Right? Have to. I just want to sit and cry for two hours. Yeah, totally, totally. Yeah, for sure. Um, okay, so back to work. That's very exciting. Yeah, that's yes. a nice feeling. I mean, it's, you know, it's been a weird long time of not doing work. Um, I shot, I did do a little work and I got to shoot, I don't know if I should, I'm allowed to say about the movie yet, but I did, I did oh. just one day on a movie recently. And I got to do a one-on-one scene with one of, if not even one of, my number one favorite actress. Well, you have to say who. Is in movies such as Baby <laughs> Boom, First Wives Club. Oh, and I know the movie. My friend produced that. Um, oh, is it Alex? Do you know Alex? Well, or I know Alex, but also, yeah. Alex, but also Gina. 
Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Um, yes. And Bianco. Yes. yes. I know exactly so what movie you're talking about. Such a good script. And it's I such a good a script. Really fun day with yeah. the lady and that is in those movies. The lady that's in those movies and the lady that is directing that movie or directed. They wrapped. Yeah. Yeah, right? I love Katie so much. Katie, that's yeah. uh, oh, oh, I'm not spoiling what movie it is, but yeah, it's great. It's really great. I think I mean, who cares? Um, but uh, it's uh, the it's good a really news good is script. that that's already been in the in the press. Yeah, they've already announced. Like, yeah, they've already yes, announced a, Katie also. Yeah, as directing. Yes, she's um, wonderful. I love her very much, and she was such a good director. Um, really that's really what Gina said. I of course had to ask immediately because I'm a fan of her work as an actress, but oh, really? was really like. How the heck did she get at the helm of this major Ooh, thing? She's um she's really impressive. I really dig her. Amazing. Yeah. Um, and a dream came true for you. That makes me very happy. Oh yeah. And it was everything and yeah. more, I'm sure. Oh, everything and more. Everything and more. Yeah. Okay. That makes really me amazing. so happy. Yeah. Oh it gosh. was like one of those like Hollywood red letter days, you know. And it was like right, we had just gotten back to LA. So it was like you're back in LA and you're doing this like your first week back here we go and then of course I've just been sitting on my ass for like six weeks but <laughs> no getting ready to move to New York ass. that's right getting ready to move to New York packing diligently um not at all <laughs> and uh <laughs> not just laying around on and I bought a sun lounger that's that's something I accomplished and I've been sitting on it quite a bit so oh my god that's um, so dangerous yeah it's really <laughs> makes me jealous uh it's good um Getting in the LA sunshine before we leave. Yes. Well, so it's been a very prolific time for you as of late and into the future. Yeah. I mean, this summer, feel, I'm really excited for this summer to, you know, it's, as we all know, it's like so rare to like know what you're going to be doing in this showbiz world of in like a few months' time. Yeah. And to know, like, oh, wow, I know what the next few months of my life look like is a, like like such a game changer on the anxiety scale. Um, so it's so nice. So I'm like trying to like take a moment to like appreciate that and um, you know, honor that and know that it will, it's very rare and that in four months time, I'll be back to like uh, in my sun lounger. Um, yes. Just <laughs> sitting around waiting for something to happen. Well, I not only so relate to it, but I, I would like to talk about this. I don't think we've ever had this conversation before on a on an episode. Um, I think it's a real skill, especially actors, not so much as writers and producers and directors, but actors in, in the waiting, you know, trying to make sure that you don't become a slave to the non-activity. And also, as I have just experienced this week, your life literally changes in a 24 hour period. And it's sort of like, um, oh, my God, all <laughs> yeah. of a sudden you're the poster child for just say yes, because, you know, the world opened right. up and it was like, oh, oh, holy, holy moly. Totally. And it's so like it's like I mean, I, I used to be really, really, really bad at the waiting around and just like would just sort of not enjoy the waiting around. I've gotten really good at enjoying the waiting around. Sometimes Why? too good. <laughs> um, Do you well, have security of some kind that you didn't have? Like, what has changed? A little bit. You- like, I, I mean, yeah, I've had a bit more security. I've created a bit more security for myself. But, like, um, I've also just, like, gotten more, uh, I think, a little bit more relaxed about it. Mm-hmm. Um, like, I mean, when I, like, when I lived, like, in New York in my early 20s and was just, like, getting started, I was, like, just always, like, a complete wreck in between things. Um and uh, I think LA, I personally find easier for to like wait around in and um, uh, just sort of waste the days away between things. <laughs> um, uh, I, I find the sunshine and, and the outdoorsiness of it uh, distracting enough to sort of get through a day. Um, and uh, I would say, yeah, I think I've just sort of like chilled out and been like, oh, it's like, you don't have to do anything this week. Like, enjoy it. But sometimes it's like, I'll enjoy it too much. And then all of a sudden, like you said, like you get all of a sudden it changes, like something happens and you're like, oh shit, I'm working all next week. And you're like, oh God, I haven't gotten off the couch in a week. Like, how does this work? <laughs> and like scrub <laughs> down, you know, like, this, like or and, yeah. like, figure out like, what do I, how do, uh, how do I think again? Um, yes. So I've gotten really good at like vacation mode, but sometimes for the, for the worse. Um, yeah. But, um, that's why it's nice when you have a little bit of prep time. 
time for things. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. It's also but just do, something I look forward to. Totally. But I do think that like the getting used to like the silence in between the noise is like really so much of like more just as much a part of it as anything else. And yeah. I, I have to say it's one of the reasons the pandemic, uh, those first few months was not a hardship for me because right. I'm used to it. I mean, I'm used to sort of like hunkering down in between uh, things, but it was like so fascinating. Yeah, did I? But it was it was fascinating to sort of have everybody else go through it, too. Yeah. Oh, it was weird. And then with the jealousy stuff, it was like, oh, I don't have to compare myself to all these other people who are working. It's like we're all on level playing ground which is yes. um, very, and I found myself actually like doing more creatively because I wasn't like comparing myself to other people's success at the yes. time. Um, mm -hmm. So that is definitely, definitely something you have to look at <laughs> emotionally. My, my, um, favorite, my favorite pandemic story of jealousy is that I was telling my friend Tara about like, I just don't understand it. Everyone's going back to work. What about me? And I was listing off these, these, these things that my friends were doing and she goes i'd just like to bring it to your attention that you're not right for any of those roles <laughs> <laughs> so so the whole thing that you're upset what are you upset about you know uh, it was such yeah. a good thing to point out and i've really been using that as my mantra of just like is this really for you mindy no it is not totally like is yeah. this your name is this your name that's the thing exactly I a lot Exactly. Uh, when it is your lane and someone else is in it, you're like, Bleh. yeah, um, yeah. But, uh, yeah. I'm making a uh, bigger lane. Yeah. <laughs> that's what meditation is about, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, I guess so. So talk to me a little bit about and, and people who are listening, the trajectory of your career, because there does seem to be you are. <clears throat> Such a good poster child. I don't know why I keep saying poster child. Sorry. For um, I picture, I picture myself on a poster when you say that. Me too. Oh, okay. okay. Well, I like that dream. part of it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. That part works up in a right. bedroom, you know, or a or a or, a, or the a ceiling stop, or yeah, or the ceiling, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> stop. <laughs> yeah. Um, talk to me a little bit about this trajectory that you've had because there is something to be said of your perseverance and your deciding that. And I think it's helpful, especially for my parents to hear from someone else. <laughs> that I, there is no other, this is what I do. This is what I want to do. It's what I live for. And, and it has shown me that even if I wait in between the lulls, something yeah. delicious always comes my way. So, I mean, and again, I think the older I get, the easier it is to deal with it. Yeah. Um, I mean, yeah. I mean, I just sort of jumped into doing stuff. I mean, I tried to go to college and then, uh, I didn't like that and um, so left very quickly and moved to New York and just sort of started, I don't know, like just sort of flailing around and, um, you know, kind of knew I wanted to do something. I didn't, I wanted to write, I wanted to perform, but I didn't quite know what that really, in what uh, way. And, uh, you know, I slowly started doing like stand-up stuff and then um, when I started doing um, like sketch comedy stuff with mm -hmm. uh, one of my best friends, Cole Scola, who's a genius, um, yes. uh, that sort of started to kind of, things started to kind of come together a bit more um, and like, you know, sort of solidifying, okay, this is a way to do the thing you want to do. Um, and then that obviously led to like more acting stuff. But, um, you know, I think that like for that, it was just like, there within that time it was like well what else what else am I gonna do like I just I, I, I truly like when and in moments where I've been like super broke and not working and just like and mm -hmm. it does and it seems really bleak for, for the foreseeable future it's like what are you like truly what are you gonna do because I hate you're gonna go <laughs> I mean I homeschooled myself in high school online and so like I barely I don't, I don't have a, I like don't have a, I think I graduated high school, but I, I never got the diploma <laughs> in the mail. Um, makes it, maybe send it as a PDF. Um, but like it was, and then, so it's like, okay, so you'll go back to high school and then you go to college and then you're going to like learn how to do something. Like you, I truly just, I never ever thought about doing anything else. So um, I just, I am not equipped to do anything else. So it was like, there was just a period, a moment where it was like, it's this or like, I mean, move in to your parents' house and 
wait for them to get old so you can get take take care of them. No, listen. Funny. There have been dark moments where I thought, you know, maybe it is time to just, you know, take a tack and learn the solar industry. You know, all these new tech jobs that Biden is promising. Yeah. I mean, maybe that's the, you know, I my mind takes me to very strange neighborhoods. Yeah. Um, and then, of course, you know, I get yeah. hit on and the then head. Something happens. Yeah, it's yeah. But it's like, I think, you know, that's the like you know what is it people always say like if there's anything else you can do do that you know and it's right. like um i do think there's like a, a merit to that um because it is the worst way to make money <laughs> um, yeah uh, i mean it's not the worst way to make money but it's 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 uh it's there's uh, easier it's ways a tr- a tr- truly taxing life <laughs> yes um, yeah and, and and also a super 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 cushy fun life but like it's when it's not, and it usually it's more often not than it is. Um, yeah, it's really, really uh, uh, not fun. Okay, F- I just had a flash of like, I can't believe I'm finally going to meet your husband, which makes me very happy. Uh, yeah, right. Yeah. He'll be there. Uh, he's going to London to see his family before he comes to New York, and then he's going to come join me. Okay, um, that sounds really good. Yeah. And how how is how is that though? Two actors in a household. Um, it's good. I mean, very emotional. Um, very, <laughs> at times, very traumatic. Um, at times, very, uh, at, at times, a lot, but usually very fun. Um, and uh, it's, I mean, I I feel like we have done a really good job of, like, helping each other with each other's work. And, like, mm-hmm. um, like you know, we do our, we often do auditions together. And it's like, I mean, no matter what, we end up trying to kill each other doing that. But it definitely, I think, makes for a better, um, for me at least, I always feel like I'm better at it because he's like a really, really good actor. And it's like more of a like, you know, I come from like the world of a comedy and I just like kind of act and he's like a legitimate actor. So um, I feel like that's- um, Or you. Like, yeah, you know what I mean. And like, yeah. I can sort of like, uh, I can like sort of steal his tricks a little bit. Um, yeah, but, uh, we um, we yeah, we have a lot of fun. It's really nice. We've been. But I mean, it's we, rare. Uh, it's we, rare to have, you know, two artists in a yeah. really. I mean, it's, it's difficult. That's all. Oh, Usually I'm just saying I'm not yeah. trying to cause problems. Oh, but. It's definitely <laughs> difficult. Oh, oh, yeah. But um, in, in a in a lovely way. And I think because we're both like deeply emotional, sensitive, uh, raw people, um, we and uh, a feeling never goes unaddressed <laughs> yes so, in, a really pos- in a really positive way and i that, love that like, yeah yeah there's very few you know there's very few hours between like feeling something and talking about something um yes that's really nice, nice thing. yeah have you have you felt the um new enormity of search parties success like have yeah. you have you felt the the remnants oh, of that oh. A little bit like when it was on TBS, I feel like no, like anytime you mentioned someone, they were like, yeah. huh? um, and then, um, even my mom and dad were like, huh? um, and uh, I, but I mean, I H- feel like it's truly been found, yeah. yeah. The HBO Max of it all, and this past season, because it was so good and Amazing. so bingy, um, I, I feel like a lot of people found it, and like in the pandemic, too, of like people just like going having getting hbo max and like running out of stuff to watch so let's just do this and like because it's such a show that ends on such um you know cliffhangers um Amazing. you want to be get people to keep tuning back in so yeah. yeah i feel like people are very much more um aware of it um because i feel you. like it was like a and me yeah i feel like it was a thing that like in showbiz hollywood land people were aware of but yeah. like no one like no one else and so um it, i feel like more people are actually you know aware of it now and it's it's so good i mean all- i know because i honestly that's when you read the benefits you do yeah i mean hands down you do totally and i'm excited for you for that and yeah. many many more things yes mm-hmm. hopefully so yes i know so i i know this to be true ah uh, that's very nice <laughs> i appreciate that. um jeffrey i adore you Thank you. I adore you. This was so lovely. I'm so happy to talk to you. And um, you, I I'm hopefully we'll see you in New York this summer. Oh, yeah. Not just once. <laughs> <laughs> and I think, 
Okay, I can't. You know, I can't hang out. Yeah. Oh, no. I'm outside. <laughs> no. Yeah. yeah. Hi. That, that, that. <laughs> Um, no, That's truly, I would funny. love that. Would you go next month? Yeah, next month. And I'm okay. I'm really going to be there off and on, but mostly through. Okay. Yeah, it's well, happening. Me up. We'll have lovely times. I think the place I'm staying has a pool on the roof. So you come for that. Love. Fab. Those, and maybe I'll, I'll, maybe I'll drag you guys um, up to the farm as well. For a Ooh, little overnighter. I would love that. I love them. They're so lovely. Um, I know. See? Right. Yeah. Small, small world. All right. Uh-huh. Y'all have a, have a good one. Thank, Thank you. you. you, ladies too. and gentlemen. One more time, me. one round of applause for Jeffrey Self. Yay! Thank you all. All right. Thank we'll, you. Uh, talk soon. This episode of Mondays with Mindy is brought to you in part by our sponsors, Beekman 1802 and the Cocktail Party. Love Mary. At Beekman 1802, we believe there's nothing more beautiful than kindness. We work hard every day to provide exceptional beauty products and cultivate moments of kindness to inspire our community of Beekman neighbors. Visit Beekman1802.com or Mondayswithmindy.com and discover our range of goat milk soaps, body care, and clinically proven skincare. Tired of cooking? Love fancy hors d'oeuvres but don't have any idea how to prepare? Look no further. The cocktail party, Love Mary, is here. For 15 years, New York's caterer to the stars and our pal, Mary Giuliani, has served her deliciously whimsical hors d'oeuvres to the best names in art, fashion, and entertainment. Now she's put them all in an adorable little box to send from her heart to your home. As Mary says, all you have to do is turn on your oven, pour yourself a drink, and enjoy more time with your guests. She'll take care of the rest. Go to MaryGiuliani.com or MondaysWithMindy.com for more information and to order yours today.